Treasure Hunt. The Z stacks were very busy. Captain Zero's loud voice was full of greedy delight as he announced, There's another big job tonight, lads. Some uh, pals of mine are sending up a ship to be unloaded. Very special cargo it is. Let's call it uh, treasure, shall we? It's arriving at midnight for uh, extra security, and it must be unloaded immediately. Zorin, you're in charge as usual. No mistakes, or there'll be trouble. The Z-Stacks looked at each other knowingly. The captain's less than honest friends quite often gave them jobs like this. Zip and Zug sighed wearily. Zorin told them off sharply. Come on, you lazy lot. Don't think it's a holiday until that ship arrives tonight. Somehow, Zorin was much better at giving orders than doing jobs himself. This morning, however, he had something he wanted to do in person. The night before, a smallish cargo ship had got into trouble on the rocks on the estuary. By now, it would only be fit for salvage. First, he collected the wreck and brought it back to the harbour. Then, he went to see Burke and Blair, the salvage dealers. Right, Zorin, they said. We'll be over tomorrow morning to collect her. At the end of a long day, the treasure ship arrived. The exhausted Z-Stacks worked for hours, and finally the job was finished. All except for a few crates which they put on a barge next to the quay. Yeah, we'll do those in the morning, said Zoran bossily. I've had enough. Next morning, rested and refuelled, Zoran returned to the harbour. To his horror, he saw that the remaining crates of treasure were no longer there. Nor was the wreck he'd brought in from the estuary the day before. Zack was the only tug in sight. Zack, you old fool! Where have you put those crates on the barge? They belong to the ship that came in last night. Burke and Blair picked up that wreck earlier and took them. No one told me. Zoran was furious. He rushed over to the salvage yard. Burke and Blair showed him the barge. Even though he didn't actually recognise the crates, Zoran grabbed them. After all, it had been very dark, and he'd been very tired when they were unloading. Back in the harbour, Zoran was shoving the crates onto the quayside, when one fell over and broke open. It wasn't the treasure at all, but some old stores they put out for rubbish collection. I don't believe it, snarled Zoran. Where are those rotten crates? If Captain Zero finds out I've messed up this job, my name will be mud, he said. He had to organise a proper search. The trouble was that the rest of the Z-Stacks were all busy that day. Out of the corner of his eye, Zoran spotted Ten Cents. Ten Cents was feeling rather low. The Z-Stacks had been getting all the big contracts lately, and he hated not being busy. When he saw Zoran beckon him, his heart sank. This'll be more of him showing off, I suppose, sighed Ten Cents as he went over. Uh, Ten Cents, said Zoran, I- I'm in a bit of a fix. I wonder if you lot can help me. Zoran told Ten Cents about the disappearing treasure crates. What exactly is this treasure? asked Ten Cents. Oh, uh, it could be anything, Zoran smirked. Ten Cents frowned. Zoran had gotten into this mess because he was too careless. Why should the Star Tugs help him? All right, Zoran, but on one condition. Make sure we get the jobs when you've got more work than you can handle. Er, uh, yeah, all right, it's a deal. But of course, Zoran didn't intend to keep his promise. So as not to arouse Captain Zero's suspicion, Zoran searched their side of the harbour, while Star Tugs went to look everywhere else. First, Ten Cents and Big Mac tried the Municipal Waste Company, in case the crates had been taken there by mistake. But nothing had arrived there for two days. Then they tried the warehouses, and all along the quay. It wasn't very easy, because Zoran couldn't really describe the treasure. The harbour was full of crates, and they couldn't start opening all of them. This treasure hunt's much too difficult, moaned Warrior. There aren't any clues. No luck, Zorin, said Ten Cents later. Are you sure you can't remember what the crates look like? If I could, I'd tell you, idiot. It was the same with Burke and Blair this morning. All I could say was that there were the crates on the barge next to the wreck. It's them, cried Ten Cents. Don't you see? They probably took your rubbish and the treasure this morning. When you arrived and couldn't remember what you'd lost, they only gave you back your old stores. Time to pay Burke and Blair a visit, I think. Let's see if we can jog their memory. 
When Big Mac arrived at Burke and Blair's yard, asking more questions about the lost crates, they looked worried. And remembered they got them after all. In fact, we were just about to uh, c contact Captain Zero about it, yes. Mm. They grinned nervously at Big Mac. Well, you won't need to now, will you? I'll just take these. Thanks. Big Mac gave the crates to Zoran, who had waited in the harbour. He hated to admit it, but the Star Tugs had gotten him out of trouble. Well, uh, thanks, lads, said Zoran. Of course, I, I realised they must be with Burke and Blay myself, but I thought I'd let you take the credit for the detective work, seeing as you're having a difficult time right now, eh? <laughs> Ten cents opened his mouth to shout at Zoran, but was interrupted by Captain Zero's angry voice. Zoran, come here! Some of that uh, treasure's missing. Don't tell me you've lost it, you stupid tug. So the captain had found out after all. Zoran would have to do some very fast talking this time. Uh, coming right away, uh, Captain, sir. I, I can explain everything. Thou teach him to be so high and mighty, said Ten Cents. He grinned at the others. Later, Zoran came over looking very surly. He scowled as he said, our wonderful captain seems to think we need some help with one or two uh, unimportant jobs. Are any of you fellas free? So, are you keeping your promise, Zoran? said Ten Cents. Zoran didn't say anything. He just scowled even harder.